There's also the question of the celestial hierarchy, which I think I mentioned to you before, that uh, there was a very complicated celestial hierarchy, but basically existence of angels, demons, the celestial hierarchy, the heavenly host, and all of that is accepted in all of these religions. It's a commonality in their origin. When we come to the question of creed, we see that the idea of a creed is like a mandatory expression of the theology. So it's a kind of theological creed or statement which says, I believe such and such. And this creedal aspect, as I said, seems to begin to appear with the Christians. Uh, and becomes a prominent aspect of Christianity and Christian denominations all through history. Because Christian, even Protestant denominations, frequently they would discuss and make up different creeds and so on that they would have. Um, and then, um, and in Judaism the creed came later, but they, Judaism also tacked on a creed eventually, even though it's not it doesn't, in Judaism, provide the same function as it does in Islam and Christianity. Islam and Christianity more need a creed than Judaism does because they are preaching religions which uh, take converts. They take people in as followers. Judaism, on the other hand, has an indisputable ethnic element in it which is that the person is born a Jew, and once born a Jew, always a Jew, no matter how many times or how much they apostatize to other religions or whatever, their Jewishness is never altered by that. Nevertheless, Judaism also provided a means of conversion, and that was that the person could go to the rabbi, and after being refused by the rabbi three times, the rabbi had to accept them as a student if they thought they were you know, sincere and not trying to harm the Jews by pretending to be a Jew or something. And so they would accept them as a student and go through a considerably long process of, of uh, conversion, which never was cut off at any, any point in the history of Judaism. And in the theory of Judaism, of Orthodox classical Judaism, the assumption was that the person was rediscovering their own Jewish roots and even if they came from a people that didn't appear to be Jewish at all in any sense, they nevertheless must have an authentic Jewish female lineage through mother to grandmother to great-grandmother and so on, going back authentically to a Jewish woman eventually. So they were rediscovering their Jewish roots in theory. In practice, of course, it's uncertain whether that was really an actual belief that was held, but that was the way that it was explained. So even there, Judaism bears some commonality with the other two religions, although not uh, complete commonality. And even today, Judaism is not really a preaching religion, so you don't, it's, it's rare that you see attempts of Jews to preach to Gentiles that you should become Jews although it's not quite absolutely non-existent, but it's not really done, uh, and it's not generally the ethos of Judaism, of course. Um, salvationism is something like the idea that there has to be some type of eternal existence in order to give the temporal existence of this life meaning. This would even be true of religions where the uh, assumption is that the individual does not survive, such as in Buddhism where the whole, or even Hinduism, where the goal is to annihilate the illusion of the self in Buddhism or the actual self separateness in Hinduism and uh, thereby reunite with the uh, general um, god of force that suffuses all existence. Or in Buddhism, where you don't actually have deity anyway, you, you get rid of the, of the self. Nevertheless, there's some kind of idea of timeless eternity of something. Even in uh, the most nihilistic seeming type of Buddhism, that of the Mahatyamika school taught by Nagarjuna in India in the first millennium CE, um, you still have this concept of shunyata or emptiness which is associated with the ultimate. 
and that is something about which nothing can be predicated. That is, you cannot say that it exists, and you cannot say that it does not exist. And that is not very far afield from a lot of the theology of the great religions, where they would say uh, you can only have the negative or apophatic theology where you say what God is not, but you cannot say what God is. That's quite common. And the negative or apophatic theology is also shared by the three religions about God, going back to the point of theology. So this kind of eternity, anyway, that you have is associated with salvationism in the sense of eternal salvation of the individual separate soul in uh, Islam and Christianity. In Judaism, this teaching is not emphasized so much, but it's also not absent because it says in the Talmud, all Israel has a share in the world to come except for three kinds of individuals and seven named individuals. This is a part of the Talmud that I studied most carefully in Tractate Sanhedrin. And um, so you even have, nevertheless, the same idea of a kind of salvationism there. It's just not stressed as much. Rather, the salvation of the whole Jewish people collectively is stressed as uh, perhaps would be found in other uh, ethnic and tribal type religions that ha exist, where you have more of a, an emphasis on the collective rather than the individual.